just gonna blast through this real fast. My youngest sister is getting married somewhat soon-ish, and she's doing that bridesmaid thing where she gives us colors and we get to wear whatever dress we want. I think the only condition is that it's a floor length dress. So I started thinking, how about I take this opportunity to make it myself? I mean, I feel like I'm skipping a few steps here because my re-entry into sewing clothing has so far consisted of nothing but skirts that I've made without a pattern. And now I have to make not only a dress, but like, you know, a formal dress. Definitely will need to be using a pattern for this. I don't think I can just wing it on this one. So yeah, it's kind of um, going from like here to like here. That visual doesn't help whatsoever. It's skipping a few steps, but why not? You know, why not just go for it? I have high hopes. My oldest sister is also making her own bridesmaid's dress, which is not surprising whatsoever because she's an incredible seamstress and designer and she makes her own clothes all the time. She made her own wedding dress and it looked amazing. So she has already been giving me some tips and hints and pattern ideas and fabric ideas, which I drastically need. So I, I, I think that I can do this. I really think that I can make a dress that looks nice enough and appropriate enough to wear as a bridesmaid for this wedding. That being said, I am starting now because if I fail, I'll still have time to go buy one. Always leave yourself time for a plan B. It's not like this is my first time sewing with a pattern. I did a couple things in college with patterns and by a couple, I mean, I think it was literally only two. Neither of them were very difficult patterns, but I don't think that a long dress needs to be a very difficult pattern either. My sister has already sent me a few suggestions and they looked fairly simple to create. I do also have to actually buy specific fabric for this for the first time in forever. I'd have to get real, real lucky to go to the thrift store, to go to a Goodwill and to manage to find enough fabric in just the right color. So I'm not even gonna try. Green is the theme here and we have a nice little range of colors that she's given us. This is a brilliant idea also for my oldest sister who's just, you know, so smart about stuff like this. You just get DMC floss and you get the little range of colors that you like and then you tie them together and make a little tassel for all your bridesmaids and they can take that around and use it to match fabrics so that they're all in the proper range. So smart. I did immediately have an idea of what style I wanted to do this dress. And it was like boat necked with these big bishop sleeves and like a, a low back and a long slit in the front. And I still very much want to make that dress soon, but I kind of immediately realized that that was over the top, big surprise. And it's gonna be like an outdoor wedding in August in Missouri. So I don't think I want long sleeves. This is what I do though. I'm like, oh, I haven't sewn a dress before. I haven't sewn a dress from a pattern in like seven or eight years. Well, how about I just make it as complicated as possible so that I have to like get three patterns and try to squish them together and figure that out. And it's like, really, really? Why would you do that to yourself? You don't know what you're doing. Get one pattern and follow the instructions. This is the thing I have to say to myself constantly. Oh, look, there's men hanging from the tree outside our balcony, which means I assume there's about to be power tools and I should wrap this up real fast. So honestly, I just came on to do this intro today because I'm already having to leave the house to go on some errands and I like to do all of my errands at once so then I can stay inside like a hermit for the next two weeks. So I had to add Joanne's to the list. Joanne, I always say Joanne's because that's what sounds right for stores, but it's Joanne, singular. Gonna go visit Joanne and there are the power tools. So we're gonna wrap that up right about now. There's also a man who can stare straight into our living room and that just got real awkward. You know, when you're on the third floor, you don't expect to look out of your window and see somebody looking down at you from a tree. Okay, 
I'm back, and the reason for the men in the trees with power tools has been revealed. They just took the whole tree, cut off all the branches first, and then chopped down the entire thing. Not only was this tree a uh, lovely home for the birds and the squirrels right outside our balcony, but it was also the privacy screen that kept a bunch of people from being able to see all the way into our apartment. That's now gone. It's um, a little annoying because we specifically chose this unit basically based on where it was and the view out of there and how there was this lovely tree that kind of blocked you from being able to directly see into the apartments across from us and vice versa. And now that's gone. It's fine. Anyway, that has absolutely nothing to do with this video. It just happened to be happening today. Let's move on to things that have to do with this video. I got all my stuff. Huzzah. So after all of that complaining about how expensive patterns are, I went to Joanne and realized that the McCall's patterns were all on sale for $1.99, which really took me back in my memory to my childhood because my mom was a seamstress and the majority of our clothes growing up were handmade by her. She sewed constantly and she was always looking for deals. She was always buying fabric and everything that she needed on sale. So I remember her like tracking when the patterns would be a dollar or two dollars, and that's when she would go and stock up on all of these patterns. That memory was like way back there. But this is what maybe annoys me a little about patterns, or maybe I just don't understand, or maybe I do understand. If you're able to frequently discount a product from $20 down to $2 with the knowledge that the majority of your customers being seamstresses who shop frequently and know when the patterns are on sale are going to buy these products when they're at their cheapest $2, why does it cost $20 in the first place? I have to assume that they're still making some amount of profit when they sell them for $2. So $20 is a massive markup. Anyway, this is my whole thing with patterns that kind of throws me off of using them, but because they were on sale for $1.99, I got several. I figured I might as well use this chance to stock up on some dress patterns I may want to make in the future, especially ones that don't seem like things I could make without a pattern. So got a few of those, also a cape pattern. But these were the three that really were contenders for the bridesmaid's dress. I knew I wanted to make it out of knit. So all three of these dresses were knit possibilities. I mean, according to my seamstress sister, everything is a possibility in knit. They're kind of all similar styles now that I look at them. I have a type. This one my sister had recommended to me and I really liked it. And then I looked at the back at how much fabric there is involved because this is a pretty darn full skirt and it's like, almost eight yards. So that ended up being a no, specifically because the fabric that I bought only had about 4.5 yards left on the bolt and I took all of it and it's still not enough. So these two are the remaining options. This is the one I'm planning to do, but this is a backup in case anything goes wrong with this one. And this is the fabric that I went for. There was a darker version of this that fit in the color palette really well. And as soon as I touched it, I was like, yup, this is the one. This fabric is so soft, it's nice and stretchy, which is great to wear. I prefer all of my like formal dresses to be made out of stretchy material because why the hell not? And then I was like, this seems kind of familiar. And I realized that it was the exact same fabric that my sister, the seamstress, had sent me a picture of because that's what she was making her dress out of. So I dropped down to the lighter color, which I think is a good idea anyway. Does it look good on my skin tone? I don't know. That's about it right now. I'm going to get some tips from my sister tomorrow and probably maybe start sewing then. I'm definitely not gonna sew today because it is late and I did a lot of errands and I have laundry to fold. So not gonna happen. The overall price is still like, less than half of what I would expect to spend on a bridesmaid's dress normally. As long as nothing goes drastically wrong here and I get a dress out of this that I can wear to the wedding, I just saved myself a bunch of money. I feel like I should hold off on that statement until the dress is finished. I'll be back later to do some more with this. And until then, I'm going to go weep over the missing tree. So it is not tomorrow. It has not been a few days. It's been a few weeks. Whoops.
Oh yeah, the tree thing was still new back then. I'm pretty used to it now. I stare at the neighbors, they stare back at me. We're awkward together. Anyway, I had some jobs and then I did a massive and very much needed spring reorganizing of this apartment, thank God. And then Mac got sick and then I got sick. Nothing serious, just enough to make me grumpy and him act like he was dying. But he is all better and back at work now and I am kind of better, mostly better. It's fine, I'm fine. Everything is fine. So we're gonna make this dress. And I feel like the beginning of this video was unnecessarily long and chatty, so we're just gonna get right to it. Let's go! Upon unfolding the pattern, I experienced immediate confusion, so, you know, not much has changed since college. I found the pieces I'll need for the cowl neck bodice and the long skirt minus the train, and it's only five pieces. Seems easy enough, right? Of course, every single one of them is supposed to be cut on the fold, which just seems like a good way to waste a bunch of fabric, so arranging them onto the four and a half yards I have was a bit tricky. In typical me fashion, I also couldn't just follow the pattern provided. Oh no, that would be too easy. I added two inches in length and two inches in width to the bottom of both skirt panels, so it's a little fuller and well, longer. See, here's the problem. My measurements right now are kind of halfway between the 14 and 16 on this pattern, and that's naturally where the pattern cuts off and switches to a new one, so I'm just a little worried about it being too small. I also added an inch in length to the bodice, because I've got a long torso, but I didn't really add anything to the width, like around the bust and the hips and the waist, so I don't know, fingers crossed that this thing fits me. Finally got all the pieces on there, kind of. I still need the skirt lining and I have 57 inches of fabric left at the end here. So my options are to either do the skirt lining shorter, like 28 inches instead of full length, which honestly seems pretty okay, right? I mean, when I used to work at David's Bridal, a lot of the bridesmaids dresses would have a shorter lining with a longer skirt around it. So that seems normal-ish. Or I could do only one skirt piece on the fold and the other one facing the other direction, which would mean adding a seam allowance on that fold side and sewing the two pieces together before starting the rest of the pattern. Also, not a bad option, right? I don't know, man. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I will cobble something together after an oatmeal break because I've only had coffee this morning and my hands were getting really shaky. I decided to go with the long lining with the back section split down the center. Even then it barely fit on here. There's not a lot of leftover fabric, so uh, here's hoping I don't mess this up. Oh my God, that was some exercise. I am worn out. It must be lovely to be able to cut out your fabric on, you know, a cutting table at waist height. But crawling around on the floor is the option in my life right now. So I guess it makes me feel better about not going to the gym. I don't care about going to the gym. Everything is cut out, which means I need to start sewing. And unlike usually when I'm like, oh great, now like what do I do first? I have instructions this time. I have some very specific directions right here to follow. Oh great, there's already a word that I don't know. What the crap is a stay stitch? Stay stitch the neck edge of bodice. Why? Slip stitch. I also don't know what that is. Um. So I think before starting this, I'm going to have to go watch a video or two on what slip stitching and stay stitching are. I have a feeling like I know how to do them. I just don't know that actual terminology. Before we start, I do need to switch my needle. This is something I never would have thought 
to do or to get. I had to run back to Joanne's the other day, Joanne, always, to get stretch needles. Uh, this is something my older sister, Carrie, the seamstress, told me and thank God she did because yeah, I never would have thought that, hey, you should change your needle before stitching on knit. Carrie has just started her own YouTube channel where she is sharing videos with all of her sewing experience and knowledge that she's gained. So I will link that in the description. Go give her some love, watch those videos. I already learned so many things by watching her videos. I'll play around and figure stuff out in the moment, but literally I did not know the names of the different parts of a sewing machine. Didn't know that I had to get different kinds of needles. I just don't know this kind of stuff because I'm just, you know, winging it. So yeah, go check out those videos if you wanna learn a little more about sewing. She has like so much experience and she is so good at what she does. Oh my god, why won't you come undone? Is it maybe because I've never unscrewed you ever? Dang it! Righty, tidy, lefty, loosey. A phrase that has never ever ever made sense to me. Oh, there it is. Aha! Success. Alrighty y'all, now I must do the sewing. <laughs> quick YouTube video on stay stitching and okay, I get it. It's to like keep a curve in the proper shape before you start attaching things to it, which is fair. It's good prep work. So I did it on the neckline like I was told to. I also glanced at one about slip stitching, which confirmed my suspicion that I know what this is. I just, I have an embroiderer's brain. So I think of it as a whip stitch, but yeah, it's the same thing. I've done it before. It's the, the typical process of hand stitching something down so that it's invisible from the front. I've also never finished an edge with bias tape before and the instructions were fairly clear but I was still slightly confused. So I watched another quick video on that, cleared up all of the issues that I had, and then I just had to sit and hand stitch for a little bit so that it would have that nice, clean look on the outside. This is going well, like surprisingly well. Despite some amount of confusion as I, as I tried to follow the instructions and put this together, I have not made any mistakes really. I did have to resize the cowl in the back because it was like an inch longer than the neckline, which I don't know how that stuff happens, but that kind of stuff always seems to happen to me. There's always something that's weirdly an inch or two bigger than it should be and I don't know y'all. I did try to be really good about seam allowances this time and actually use the little guide and do the 5 eighths like they say to. So sometimes I forget how fast sewing something is and I am, I'm sure, extremely slow. It took me hours just to figure out the pattern and cut out the fabric this morning, but I'm used to embroidery and I'm used to a single project taking me weeks, months, or years. Considering I'm half done with this project, and like the difficult half because the skirt half shouldn't be that hard, in one day. It's nice. I'd actually love to see if I can just finish this whole thing in one day. It is dinner time right now, cause I'm hungry, but I think I should have plenty of time after dinner to start working on the skirt and possibly just finish this entire dress tonight, basically be done with it, which would just be lovely. So patterns aren't as scary as they seem. A little confusing, yes, but I'm just as confused when I don't use a pattern and I have to sit there and come up with the answer myself and, you know, there's not much of a difference either way. Anyway, I'm gonna go make dinner and then see if I can crack this thing out before bedtime. I have high hopes. Making the skirt turned out to be super fast and the split piece in the back of the lining caused zero problems. 
Huzzah! At this point, I got a little involved and forgot to film much more, but basically, it was just attaching the bodice to the skirt, which confused me for a hot second, just because even though this is a stretchy fabric, the seam itself around the waist won't stretch, right? So then, how do you get it on over either your boobs or butt. I tried Googling answers to that sewing conundrum and finally decided to just follow the directions and sew it together. The pattern then said to add a piece of elastic to the inner waistband, but I'm still confused about what that would do if the seams themselves don't stretch. Didn't matter though, because I managed to get the dress on fairly easily, so I left it as is, no elastic. I definitely didn't need to lengthen the waist like I did though, particularly because this pattern is actually designed to fall a bit below the natural waist, and I prefer it higher up, more on the natural waist. But I just shortened it again and trimmed off the extra fabric, so it was all good. I probably could have gotten away with not hemming this dress at all because the fabric won't fray on the edge, but I went ahead and did the outer layer with just a single turn. Didn't want to do a second turn for that traditional like baby hem or whatever it's called because it seemed like that would just get too thick and weighty on the bottom. And I left the lining as is because why not? And then it was bedtime. Y'all, I made a formal dress in one day and I didn't even start that early. Sewing is fun. Is it perfect? No, but is it passable? Hell yes it is. But you can also see everything through this fabric and on this fabric. I actually had to get all new underwear to go with this because it's low backed. So you can't wear like a normal bra. And then yeah, you can see the lines of literally everything underneath. When it was laying on the floor for me to cut it out, I stepped on it and it left a footprint as though I had stepped in mud. So there's like two little places up on the front where um, I accidentally caught like one tiny thread of the outer layer when I was slip stitching the bias tape on the armbands down and like that tiny, tiny little dot is so visible. So I'm gonna have to go back and uh, trim that and fix it and just make sure that it's not catching the outside. It's all good. I am feeling like super powerful right now. Bring on the fabric, whip out that sewing machine. I'm just gonna sew myself a whole new wardrobe because if I can sew a dress in one day and it can turn out looking like pretty darn good, I need to start sewing more. Particularly because I just, I don't do well shopping in stores. I I'm not into the styles that are happening right now. I'm not. I think my lesson here is that I need to stop being scared of patterns. Yes, there are challenges. Yes, there was confusion, but there's also YouTube and my sister. So I can make it through those challenges. I can get over that confusion. So yeah, don't be scared of patterns. Don't be scared of sewing. You can do this. Because if I can do it, you can do it. Let's be real. Anyway, there is just one more thing that this dress needs, and that is the approval of the bride. It's been a pleasure as always. Stay tuned for more garment sewing videos in the near future. I love embroidery and I will always have embroidery videos coming out on this channel. But as we all know, embroidery is an extremely slow, slow art form. So I tend to always have multiple embroidery videos stewing per se, but they just take me a while to finish because the project itself takes a while to finish. So in the meantime, I am so happy to get to share with you guys other things that I'm undertaking, whether it's sewing or baking or making something entirely random that I've never tried before. And I hope that these videos are enjoyable, slightly entertaining. I'll keep making them regardless. Thanks for watching.